Hi, I'm Miles Berry. I'm Professor of Computing Education at the University of Roehampton. What I want to do is explore some of the problems that are on this Project Euler.net site. These are intended as programs for, as problems for those who are learning computer programming, but so many of these, all of these really, have their foundation in mathematics. There are different ways of thinking about these problems if you're coming from a purely programming background or if you're coming from a mathematical background. Either way, I think problems such as these provide a really rich territory for developing what we in computing education call computational thinking and what over in maths education you might call mathematical reasoning. The website is there, there's, a hundred, there's loads of these available online. Let's have a look at the archives here. So I've got 796 of these programs. They get, on the whole, progressively harder. The first 50 or so I think are reasonably accessible to those who are learning programming at secondary school, certainly with secondary mathematics. We're going to start with the first of these just for this little introductory video here, which is multiples of three or five. So here, if we list all the natural numbers below 10 there are, that are multiples of three and five, we get three or five, we get three, five, six and nine. Adding those together, as a little test for you, comes to 23. And now we have the question of find the sum of all the multiples of three or five below a thousand. Those with a programming background will then go ahead and make a machine do this. Those who are coming from a more mathematical standpoint might pause for a moment and think about this first. Is there an easy, is there an elegant way to solve this? But let's have a go at doing this from a computing perspective. I'm going to copy the text of the question there onto my clipboard and move over to Google's Colab. So Google's Colab is a free version of Jupyter Notebooks. Jupyter Notebooks itself is free, but we have to install that on a machine and have Python and all of the rest of it set up. It's much easier to just go to a website here. So this is colab.research.google.com and let's just add some text in above that. So we've got an explanation of what the problem is. Don't need that in there. I can make some of this headings if I want to. So let's do that. And problem one. And then we've got the text of our problems there. And that formats, that's very nicely for us. So we've got this idea of not quite yet literate programming. We, we can start to do this. So let's have a go at a very naive approach to this, such as you might get a GCSE or even, I don't know, year nine computing student doing. So what have we got to do here? We've got to iterate over a list and see what total we get. So let's have a go at this. We're going to set up a total to keep track of that at the beginning. And then we're going to go through a whole list here for i in range. Well, let's just start with this up to 10, just to check that we're on the right track here. For i in range 10, which is naught up to, but including 10. I suppose purists would say we don't need to count zero in there, uh, but never mind. And then what we want to do is test whether the number is a multiple of three or a multiple of five. So I've got an if statement. If i divided by three gives a remainder of zero, or if i divided by 5 gives a remainder of 0, then do something new. I want to take my current total and add whatever my present number is to that. Mathematicians at this point would probably be in horror. This line here could never make sense, but computing people would should pronounce this as total becomes equal to total plus i. We're not using equals here in the sense of an equation. And that should, with a bit of luck, give us the answer 23 when we run it. In fact, this won't do anything. We need to, at the end here, get some output for this. So let's print the total and see what we get. Are you feeling confident, folks? It takes a little while to power up a whole Google server farm there, but with a little bit of luck, sooner or later, something should happen. Connected. And we get the answer 23, which comes as a tremendous relief. So what we have to do here is find the sum of all the multiples of 3 or 5 below 1,000. So rather than 10, let's have a go at 1,000. They're just changing one line of code. We run that and we get 233,168. Those of you who have been working away with a calculator will, I'm sure, by now be able to confirm whether that's right or not. This is something we do in programming an awful lot. And in fact, Python has a very nice syntactic sugar for dealing with this called a list comprehension. So what I, all I need here is to add up the sum of a list of things. i for i in range. What did we go with? A thousand there. If i percent three, oops, percent three 
equals zero, or I percent five percent is modular division is equal to zero. Okay, and that should give me the same answer in just one line of code. Two three three one six eight. That comes as a bit of a relief to me. So you who are watching this, perhaps coming from a more mathematical rather than programming background, might have thought, why is he not using the triangle numbers that are involved here? Because the sum of all of these multiples of three is simply three times the appropriate triangle number. The sum of all these multiples of five is just five times the appropriate triangle number. I might go in and write some um, maths there to, to summarise this. But let's have a go at doing this, just going in and defining my formula for triangle number. So if I don't know the formula for triangle number, I can easily get the computer to work one of those out for me. So let's go with Tn here as the nth triangle number, and that's going to be equal to the sum of the range of the numbers up to and including n. So that's not up to and including n. So we go one step further than that. That just defines the function. We can so I run that, and now we should be able to get t3 out, this third triangle number, 1 plus 2 plus 3. I'm expecting the answer 6 to come up out here. Okay, and I made a rookie error and failed to return a value. So <laughs> I called the function t and worked out the sum, but then didn't do anything with it. Sorry. Let's run that again, shall we? t3, we get the value 6 back from the computer this time. That's kind of reassuring, isn't it? So, uh, multiples of 3 and 5 below 1,000. What's the appropriate, how many of the multiples, um, 3 times so many multiples of 3, 333 multiples of 3, the 303rd multiple of 3 would be 999. That's definitely on my list. So I want something like T333, and it's three lots of that, three times T333. And the 200th multiple of, sorry, and 200 times, sorry, five times the sum of the first uh, 200 uh, numbers. So that's 5 plus 10 plus 15 plus 20, all the way up to 1,000. So I reckon 5 plus 10 plus up to 1,000 is five times the 200th triangle number. Five times... T200 should work for us. We need to check, oh, below a 1,000. So we don't actually want that one in there at all. We want the 199th triangle number coming out of that. And let's see what we get there. Oh, we've got a different answer. That's very strange, isn't it? Three times the multiples of three, five times, the, sorry, so we've got um, three plus six plus nine plus all the way up to 999, and we've got five plus 10 plus 15 all the way up to 995. What could possibly have gone wrong? Well, the, the multiples of 15, 15, 30, 45, 60, we've counted those twice, so we need to subtract 15 lots of the appropriate triangle number here, and I can't quite work that out in my head, but it's going to be something like a thousand divided by 15. Uh, to work out however many of the, whatever the right triangle number to add on is. Let's see what happens when we run that code. And we get exactly the right answer, which comes as a tremendous relief there. Okay, this here is just doing integer division. So the how many times does 15 go into a thousand with no remainder? So, you know that there's a formula which works out the nth triangle number. I don't need to keep doing that addition each time. What we have here is the formula for the nth triangle number. So I should be able to just change this from my really laborious adding those numbers up to just using the n times n plus 1 divided by 2 formula, which should give me the nth triangle number. 3 times 4 is 12, divided by 2 should give us 6. So that's rewriting, refactoring my code here. So as to use that formula, T3 then is still 6, and with a little bit of luck, this should still give us 233168.0. It's coming up with 0, 0.0 because I've got normal division in here. If I go with integer division, I get 6 out of that, and I get an integer. 
233168 out of that. So that's just one of those problems. Let me take you back to the list here so you'll see what the other ones look like. Then we've got even Fibonacci numbers. How are you going to generate that section? Session, that collection of Fibonacci numbers is there a more mathematical way to go about this? And then we get into prime factorization and the whole of number theory. But we'll talk about those in the session on at the beginning of October. I'm going to stop the tape now.